So last week we looked at a paper who had reviewed about 90 different uh, published papers that had used different neural networks uh, when it comes to analyzing EEG signal data sets. This paper interestingly came up with a workflow in terms of if you're interested, for example, in using different deep learning architectures, neural networks, um, then this diagram would then potentially help you identify which neural networks work best for the type of EEG classification um, task that you wanted to analyze. And the diagram was pretty interesting. Having said that, as always, when you look at research papers, take it with a grain of salt because there's always areas where that may or may not pertain to what exactly you are doing. But whether you are a computational uh, neuroscientist, which is a mashup of computer science and neuroscience, or if you are pure computer scientist or pure neuroscientist, these type of studies that are emer emerging more and more um, it's becoming more interesting to us because it will also help us um, <clears throat> give us guidance as to what type of neural network ar architectures should we actually be using. And so I'll share the diagram with you today, but what's more interesting is one of the neural networks that they had uh, looked at appeared to be one that worked well across all the type of EEG um, signal classif classification that we know of today. That particular neural network is called com convolutional neural network. We'll talk about that a little bit, but I wanted to bring you your attention to those specific type of neural networks that work best, best with EEG. So, if you're a pure neuroscientist, or let's say um, a person who's just genuinely interested in EEG data, AKA brainwaves, um, and you have now access to a lot of data, especially we, we do have more and more access to uh, open source data, and you're interested in designing your research and look at those type of EEG data, but you're not sure what type of neural networks in this case to use to help you identify whatever, whatever it is that you want to identify, then this paper is for you. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you. Um, this is a diagram that came up with. And if you look at the top portion of the diagram, by the way, I'll add the link of this paper again. Um, in the link below. It's the same paper that we looked at yeah, uh, last time. And so the task that they're, for example, here identifying is mental workload, motor imagery, ERP, emotion recognition, and seizure detection. These are your traditional EEG data set type of classification that you would look at. Um, there are other things that you could look at. I'll talk a little bit more about it at the end. But more interesting, if you look at the neural networks that they identify work best with this type of classification, as you can see, CNN or convolutional neural networks is working apparently across all the different EG data uh, tasks. And then uh, in the diagram, they go more into details as to you know, um, how, what is it that you want to look at, what type of data, et cetera. So it's very interesting. I highly recommend you looking at it if you're interested in this. Um, and also, I wanted to, while we're talking about convolutional neural networks, if you're not familiar with it, I highly recommend you look at it. But essentially, at a very high level, traditionally, CNNs have been used to, um, uh, in neural network architecture, to uh, help recognize images uh, or objects in an image. So let's say you have an image of something and then you want your neural networks to actually identify what is it, what it is on that, um, um, on that image. What object is, this, is it? And um, 
Essentially, at a very, very high level, CNNs are made up of three layers. The first layer is input layer, which is actually the convolutional layers. The third layers are hidden layers. These are called, they, they could be convolutional layers, but they could also be other type of layers. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the last um, layer, which is the output layer. And so within these layers, for each node, basically you can add or you should add ways and thresholds. And let's say that you have an input data in one of the layers or one of the nodes. If the input uh, data is above the threshold that you have associated with that layer or node, then the data is passed on to the next um, layer. Um, so the switch is on, for example. But if, if it's below the threshold, then the data is not passed to the next layer. And essentially what it does is that if you think of zeros and ones in a bit or um, off and on, you know, um, data transfer in a neuron, then that is basically, that is how it's designed. That's, that's, that's how it knows whether it should pass on the data or not. And so it also starts with, in early layers, it starts with, for example, identifying an edge of an image or at identifying colors of an image, et cetera. And then with each layer, because it learns, then it looks at additional parts of the image. And so at the end, once it feels, or no, I should not say feels, once it thinks that it identified the image, then, the, then it stops, then it says, okay, this is what I think the image is. So, there's a lot of that's why you have different layers because each layer is basically looking at you know that and then you know obviously it's much more elaborate than what i'm talking about uh right now and here's another illustration of convolutional network neural networks if you're interested for your eeg data i highly recommend you looking at this because these type of architecture also will help you uh, identify what it is that you know in from your EG data that you can add into in terms of the input layers, for example. And if you remember, we also talked about last time, the EG data is one of the easier ones. It's not easy, but it's still easier than others because in that it has real value. So for example, one of the real values it has is time. Uh, and of course it has other real values as well. But if you're an EG, if you're familiar with EG, you already know that. And so those are the type of input data that you can, you can add into it. And then of course, there are also other images that talks, talks about the CNNs, what the layers are, et cetera. Uh, nonetheless, I think this particular um, workflow was actually interesting because for those of us who are still exploring CNNs, um, to use with our EG data, these type of diagrams are very interesting. Um, nonetheless, in the paper, obviously, they go through a lot of um, feedback uh, or details, I should say. And so these are um, just some examples, some ways in which you can use your EG data to actually use neural network architecture to make meanings of um, your EG data. Obviously, the type of EG data classification that I just showed are very traditional in that, for example, seizure detection is one of the way, traditional ways in which we can look at EEG data. Having said that, uh, put on our philosophical hat and sort of looking forward, um, there are much more ways in which we can extract data from, um, from EEG data. If you think about an EG data, in actuality, it's with, AKA, we also call it brain waves, but in actuality, there are electrical impulses from the neurons, from the brain. And those electrical impulses, if you go down the lower layer, then they, are, they're, they're, they go into neurons you know, at the atom level, and then you have the electrical, electron level. So it's the jump of all these electrons that basically in actuality, creates those um, electrical impulses. And so the fact that you have, by only having access to an EG data, you actually have a glimpse into the way in which these electrons are moving and also the, the electrical waves that they are creating, it's 
my philosophical opinion that there is much more to be learned and understood and researched when it comes into those EEG data, brainwaves data. And because we're in an era where deep learning, machine learning, neural networks, et cetera, are also penetrating into the neuroscience type of research, we are definitely at the verge of making amazing um, uh, I, um, research uh, and exploration in terms of understanding, for example, in this case, what brain waves mean and what we could potentially learn more from it. In other words, you're more than welcome to stick what is a traditional way of looking at EEG data, no problem there. But if you are <clears throat> one of those scientists or students or aspir as aspired scientists that want to look forward, then the, the exploration areas that we have, it's becoming more and more um, exciting and, and um, expansive in that we don't need to necessarily stick to how they have looked at EG data and analyze it and classified it and learn from it in the past. We can actually look forward, do forward looking and look at what these potential brain waves could teach us and they could mean and what type of information, additional information they could carry now that we have access to big data, neural networks, deep learning, and all these different amazing ar architecture that we're covering here. All right, guys, so I hope this was helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, let me know, and I'll see you next time. Bye.